Well, good day everyone, and it's Huey. We're up for a new BattleTech series, and this time uh, we'll be playing um, as an Aussie character. I thought I'd take the Mickey out of myself, uh, out of my own culture this time, rather than uh, another one. And uh, yeah, we'll just let the intro play uh, as we normally do with the first um, play, the first episode of. Uh, Every playthrough, well, I've only done one. We are back with Battletech. So I am a little late to the party, <clears throat> and, but I uh, finally picked up uh, the Heavy Metal DLC. Mm -hmm. So this time around, we're, uh, I know I said uh, at the end of uh, the last series that I was going to continue on with the campaign, although I've had some issues with my PC, and so uh, I, was, I was able to get those save files back, but I just thought, you know what, we're going to start from scratch, and this time we're going to do a campaign mode, or uh, sorry, career mode, beg your pardon. And as usual, we're going to be doing a lot of role play. I'm going to be reading all the um, dialogue, uh, unlike a lot of other YouTubers who just skip right through it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try and do my best with voice acting, uh, since H uh, HBS is incredibly lacking in that with the voice acting, so I'm going to add my own. Uh, but this time we're going to do an Iron Man mode. We're going to do un unequipped max. So we're just going to do all the standard settings. Okay, so let's start the game. So I've got an idea of uh, what kind of character I want to play. Um, and so he's going to be a real redneck Aussie. Well, not quite redneck, but yeah, a bit of a larrikin. And his initial uh, teammates are going to be uh, his family. So I'm going to change uh, all their names and their backgrounds. So we're going to spend most of this first episode doing a lot of role play. Um, so if you want to skip to the second, that's fair enough. But uh, he's going to be an Aussie, so it would make sense that we would hail from the Lyran Commonwealth. Since uh, Lyran Commonwealth is a real hotbed of, uh, you know, uh, a mix of uh, Aussies and Indian, uh, sorry, Aussies and Canadians and people from the US and so on and so forth. So uh, we're gonna, this time I'm gonna go, my family My family went bankrupt and then I fell into the life of a, well I guess, Inner Sphere mercenary. Yeah sure, cause I, yeah, fair enough. My family went bankrupt, we got tactics, guts, and tactics. So he's going to be another tactical character. 
and being <laughs> being an Aussie character, his call sign. We Aussies aren't known for their imaginative naming, so it's gonna make make him a he, and. He's going to be a descendant of the great Steve Irwin. So, we're going to name him Barry. And call him... Yeah, Barry Irwin. And his call sign is Bazza. So, <laughs> which is also his nickname, but hey, well, yeah. And I'm doing this just to piss off all the mil military nuts out there who, uh, you know... Like that's not how call signs go. Rah! <laughs> so yeah, and I think this portrait might be pretty darn good actually. The blonde hair. I'm gonna change the. Uh, he's at ten, ten skin, which makes sense. And I could do this guy. Actually, yeah, I'm going to customise this one. So, <laughs> and I'm going to put him in a cool outfit. I like him in the. I like the cool outfits. Uh, the beard, I'm going to change. I'm going to keep the hair and the the tattoos and the scars and everything. The eyebrows are fine. The facial hair, not so much. Uh, nah. But that that'll do. That'll do fine. Alright, so it's Barry Irwin. So we're going to save that. <clears throat> this is from the Lyrian Commonwealth. Uh, after, the day after your 16th birthday, your family went bankrupt and your parents took their own lives. Quite sad. But he's got his brothers and sisters with him and his cousins. So, the mercenary career. You're, Everything an industrious mercenary commander would, could want. A crew of talented misfits, a lance of ancient battle mechs, and a derelict cargo ship to call home. It's one thing to finish a mission in one piece, more or less, but it's another to keep your mech warriors happy and healthy. Your mech's patched up and ready for action, and your balance sheet firmly in the black. As the rumours of another succession, uh, succession intensify, the Mercenary Review Board announces a new evaluation protocols to assess the mercenary companies of the periphery with a score. Nice. Alright, so uh, yeah, first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to check the mech bay and see what we got. Ugh, okay. The enforcer's not bad. Actually, I'm gonna swap these around though. Yeah, the enforcer's okay, the blackjack's fine. Uh, probably we'll make some changes on the first opportunity we travel. The commandos, uh, both 1Bs. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take an Irby out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna swap these two around. Uh, yeah, a, little, a lovable trash can. So we'll take uh, the Irby. Yeah, I don't think that was too bad. But, uh, yeah, anyway. So, let's go to the Mech Warriors and check them out. Now, there's something that a lot of people miss uh, for some reason when they first start out this game, and that is you, you start with some experience, or a commander does. So I'm going to go straight for Sensor Lock. His gunnery is absolute trash. His guts is fine, though. Uh... And I'll try and work up gunnery. Um, but yeah, he's going to ultimately be a tactician. So, seems Barry Irwin. And we're going to confirm that. Training confirmed, Commander. Alright. <clears throat> Commander? So, we're going to change all these characters. So, we're going to call this one uh, Sharon... Sharon. Oh, hang on. All right, hang on. Sharon Irwin. So that's his sister. All right. So yep, she voice. Uh, all right. Her call sign will be Shazza. <clears throat> and let's see. Awaiting orders. 
Now we want a raspy voice. Standing by. Waiting for orders. What? No. Well, the, I do like the. Uh, I, I love that voice, but it's yeah, German. So. No. What do you need? Oh, actually, that one's a good one. I do like the uh, the portrait. The portrait's fine. Might change a hair colour though. Uh, yeah. No. Let's see. Hair roots. Actually, no. We'll keep it like that. We'll keep it like that. So this is Shazza. And uh, <clears throat> so we've got Baza, Shazza. Yes, Commander. And this can be. Uh, I might make this uh, Barry's twin brother. Yeah. So how do I get? Anyway. So we're gonna call him Gary. Erwin. And his call sign will be Gaza. <laughs> so <laughs> Baza, Gaza, and Shazza so far. And uh, I want to. Uh, you can't use the pre preset ones, which is a shame. Right, but hair, where's the hair? Hairstyle. Might might not make him a twin. Actually, she'll give him this hair. That's cool, and uh, change his hair colour. Be a bit more blonde. Uh, it's about the closest I'm gonna get. All right, and the hair tips. Let's see. I want lighter hair. That'll do. Alright, so there's Gaza. <clears throat> uh, can't really give him a... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, save. You can't change their uh, background though, which is kind of sucky, so... Yeah, we'll save that. Why hasn't his portrait changed? Hang on. Oh yeah. Yes, Commander. Let's uh. Receiving you. Yes, Commander. See what voices we got. Uh. Commander. Yes, Commander. They got no Aussies. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, copy. Uh, Commander. Good to go. I'm ready. Where are the Aussies? Commander. Well, he's British, but that, that's close enough. Alright. <clears throat> so... Orders. We're gonna change this to a male. Uh, yeah, so let's customize. He, and we're gonna call him uh, Warren. <clears throat> Warren Irwin. So the story is they were all part of, they, obviously, they went bankrupt. Oh, let's call it Waza. And, uh,. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. I can put... <laughs> oh my god, okay. Um, let's change the complexion. Wait a minute, what's the skin colour? Okay. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so Woz is a little bit feminine looking, but that's okay. <clears throat> so, alright, there, there we go. There's Woz's face. And we're going to change the clothing to match. There we go. The uh, hairstyle. Should we make him bald? Yeah. So the head tips, do we? we're going to go that and. Oh, hair roots. Hmm, maybe not that. That works. And let's change the expression a bit. Yeah, that's shifty look. Alright. Ready for orders. Yes, Commander. No. Uh, yes, Commander. Um What are your orders, Skipper? Waiting for orders. Good to go. Gotta find an Aussie. Oh, fine. It's a bit. Yeah, it was the uh, British guy again. Actually, we'll give him Medusa's. Commander. Ah, yo. Orders. There we go. Yeah, it's American, but yeah, we're just pretending he's an Aussie. So we got Warren Ar Irwin, <clears throat> and that's Wazza. I don't know why it hasn't changed the portrait. Wait, hang on. Maybe it'll change next time, but uh, well. receiving you. So we'll do another um other lady, so let's do Teresa Irwin. Yeah. Um, and she can be Tezza. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I'm receiving you. That'll do. And uh, let's give her some blonde. Uh, either blonde or dark hair. That'll do. And a matching uniform. Kind of matching. There we go. So we got the Irwin family. Direct descendants of the great Steve Irwin. And, uh, yeah, they went bankrupt. And, uh, we're, try you know, the, um, long, centuries-long standing, uh, zoo and, uh, nature documentary franchise went belly up. And, uh, unfortunately their parents took their own lives. So if we go back, what happens if I go back into Mech Warriors? They haven't changed. Commando? What? Hang on. Commander. Why aren't they saving? Uh, I don't know, Receiving but... You. Anyway... Maybe they'll, uh... Standing by. Anyway, maybe they'll change when we start our first missions. Anyway, um... <clears throat> let's go to the Argo. Well, first, let's have a chat with... Uh, our commander, uh, our exo, Darius. Always good to see you at Ops Barry. Can I do something for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, mate. You got a few minutes to chat? Oh, I'd like to catch up. <clears throat> yeah, sure. We've got time to talk. Yeah, tell me a bit about yourself, Darius. Where are you from? I grew up in the Cell Heights. It's uh, one of the hub stations orbiting Artru. Uh, 30 decks of economic stratification with the corporate suits on the upper decks and everyone else crammed into the lower ones. 
My old man was a dockhand. We lived on deck 28, two levels up from the bottom, with the other station maintenance personnel. Twelve hours a day, six days a week, my dad would load and unload the cargo shuttles, vacuum sealed quiller and nutrient paste for people like us, and luxury goods for the suits upstairs. The old man must have unloaded a thousand cases of uh, Cassildon eel row plump. Okay. <clears throat> plump, succulent, eggs the size of melon balls. Never got to taste any though. Any one of those tins would have cost him half a year's wages. Alright. <clears throat> anyway, Barry, I don't want to saddle you with my life story. Suffice to say that I've got an eyeful of what I didn't want to be in the Nassau Heights. And I did what I had to to change my circumstances. By the age of 16, I struck it out on my own. I left the station with a handful of skills, an enormous web of contacts, and a rucksack full of that expensive caviar. And once I made, up, made it off of Nassau Heights, I never ever looked back. Yeah, alright mate. Oh, crikey, I'd like to talk about something else. <laughs> Be my guest. What do you need? Oh, uh, you know what? Change my mind, mate. Yeah, gotta run. I'll catch you later. You catch up for a beer, yeah? You know where to find me. Yeah, I do. Don't, don't go trying to bloody dodge me, alright, mate? I know, I'll come looking for you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <clears throat> we've got, uh, we can talk to Yang. So, let's go and do that. Anything I can do? Yeah, hey, boss. Welcome to the Mac Bay. My own little piece of heaven right here off the ship. Something I can help you with? Hey, mate, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you wind up with this crew? That's a long story, boss. Shortest version I can give you. I signed on and served af uh, after I served my term in the Third Succession War, fighting for the Compelling Confederation. If you want to know more, you can ask whatever you want. Otherwise, let's get back to talking shop. Oh, crikey, where are you from originally? Bryant, in the Confederation. You may have heard of, uh, heard of our claim to fame, the Crowley Lizard Cow. No? Well, trust me, they're delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of them, mate. Oh, oh they, you're right, they are bloody delicious. Anyway, as the story goes, Bryant was a real nice place once, a tourist spot, big with hikers and fishing enthusiasts, pale blue skies, emerald green seas, and a booming agricultural business. You know, the works. I never knew it that way, though. Stefan Amaris got to it a couple of centuries before I was born, and, well, that was that. As the story goes, Brian used to have these enormous orbital mirrors. Storm inhibitors, they called them. The Star League put them in place, and when Amaris took the system in, his, in the Civil War, he had his troops use them for target practice. Without those mirrors, Brian reverted to its natural state. A miserable little ball of wind-blown dirt, actively hostile to human life. By the time I came along, the only places where people could live in relative safety were the planet's poles. Of course, you can't fit a planet's entire population into a handful of cities at the, at the poles. There just isn't enough space, no matter how far you dig da down you dig or how tall you build. A lot of people, mostly the poor, died, or, died in the early days. There's still a lot of overcrowding in Bryant cities, even now. Well, that's my childhood home in a nutshell. Way too many people jammed into a tiny, claustrophobic space. And no one to go but off planet. I cleared out of there as fast as I could and I never looked back. Gotta admit though, I do miss the taste of lizard cow. Oh, jeez, mate. Oh, so that's pretty bloody harsh. Uh, Oh, tell me about your time in the military. Who'd you serve with? Second St. Ives Lancers, the first battalion under Major Ling. I saw my action the most. This arm's a souvenir of my time in the service. I lost the original back in 3010 on Solaris. You know, when we first arrived in Solaris, I loved the place. It's an agricultural world. 
sort of a breadbasket for the neighboring systems. Green fields, rolling hills, you got the picture. We just walked out of hell on Kittery, and the Fed Rats drove us out in 05 with their tails between our legs. So it looked like paradise to us. I remember kicking back in the mech bay, my feet propped up on the engine block, sipping on the, on the snifter of ambergris vermouth. Not a bad way to spend a sunny afternoon. Anyway, it turned out the Federated Suns weren't done with us yet. Barely had a month and out of deployment when they sent the city hussars to burn us out. I'm sure there were sound, sounds of strategic reasons for House Davy under Juan Solaris, but it sure felt pers personal to me. Long story short, <clears throat> one of their scouts managed to slip through our perimeter and hit my mech bait. I was tinkering around in the Centurion's custom-made rumble seat at the time. Being surrounded by all that armor is really the only reason I made it out alive. Still, I didn't make it out unscathed. I lost two of my favorite assistants and my own right arm. I got this ugly thing grafted onto me as a reminder. And yet, here I am, working for a li doing mercenary work for a living. Some people, people never learn, huh? So, uh, where did you leave the Capitalist Confederation, mate? <clears throat> After my tour of duty was up, you mean? I don't know. It was just time for change. Besides, the place wasn't for me anymore. In a way, it never really was. I learned a lot from my time in the service. You have a first-hand view of the elitist bullshit that saturates Capellan culture. How it rewards high-born idiots at the common people's expense. Speaking as a thoroughly common man, that didn't sit right with me. When my tour was over, I packed up my things and made a beeline for the periphery. It seemed like a good as place as any to find a new beginning. Yeah, you never get really get away from aristocracy, young. Hell, I was born in able. Even though we just ran a zoo. Yeah, but you're a competent noble. And you aren't afraid to get your hands dirty. At the end of the day, that's all I really care about. I wonder how many times I watch talented engineers get passed over for promotion just so, uh, so some idiot get, with a title could get could advance. Too many to count. <clears throat> Well, for what it's worth, mate, I'm glad, glad that you made that choice. Uh, you brought my mech back from the brink more, more than once. Heh, way more than once, if memory serves. Still, I appreciate the kind words, and for what it's worth, I'm happy to be here. With this crew, uh, with this crew, going, going career military would have been an enormous mistake. Well, in your position, I might have done the same. Anyway, let's, uh, let's drop this conversation, eh? Yeah, let's. This has been a fun trip down memory lane, but I'm sure that we've both got more important things to worry about. Yeah, you're right, mate. Be my guess. What do you need? Oh, uh, nothing else, mate. Just wanted to have a bit of a yarn, you know? All right, I'll talk to you later, mate. Talk to you later. All right, see ya. All right, so... <laughs> Yeah, we'll go and talk to Pharaoh. What's on your mind? Commander Erwin, what can I do for you? Well, if you're gonna be part of this crew, I wanna get a bit of sense of who you are. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm an actual doctor, but not the medical kind. I hold two doctorates, one in physics and the other in mechanical engineering. And now I'm a ho I'm hauling around in a lost tech wonder with me a crew of men of merry pilots seeking my fortune. It's funny the place like the places life takes you. Have you always wanted to be a shipboard engineer? No, not always. When I was fifteen, I wanted to be a statis statistician. You know, a nice quiet life, alone in the ivory tower. That was my personal dropship. That's what my personal dropship was going to be called. Preparing ma uh, mathematical models and studying survey res results. So yeah, you know, every girl's dream. Um, well, you seem pretty enthusiastic about it. 
Why didn't you bloody well follow through? Well, interests change. I mean, I still like statistics, but it's really more of a hobby now. Is that weird? People have told me it's weird. I don't know. Plotting graphs and forecasting future events calms me. It's like my own little way of using math to bring order from chaos. And besides, uh, everybody needs a hobby. I know for a fact that Darius crochets. Oh, okay, uh, didn't know that. Oh, jeez, the things you learn. So, uh, what made you get into engineering? Uncle Heiner's Experiment World, a live-action STEM edutainment program from the Lillian Commonwealth. <clears throat> it just started airing after my 19th birthday. You may have seen it. It ran for three seasons before it was cancelled. The host was a tattooed, chain-smoking nihilist who taught children the magic, magic of chemistry. You know, the making th thermite with aluminium cans and belts at a belt sander, that kind of thing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You like that guy, huh? I married him. Long story, but the important bit is, in the six months before the annulment, I learned that I had a real talent with machines. When Heiner blew out a power uh, relay, or took out uh, the iron, took out a tire iron to the bandsaw, I was the one who put it back together again. I found a great deal of peace in that. From there, it was just a matter of getting into the right schools and following my bliss. So, that's what I did, and well, here I am. It turned out all right for me, all things considered. All right, well, I got the elevator pitch. Uh, now give me the long version. Sure, if you like. Let's see, where to begin? Well, I was born on the Regulus, in the Free World League. My parents were academics. I know, big surprise. And I felt uh, I spent most of my early years bouncing back and forth between the suburban apartment and the Fedowski, my Baba June's living dropship. Your your babble what? What, uh, what who's that? My grandfather. He carved out a nice little business for himself around running a taxi service for pilgrims travelling to and uh, from Dar es Salaam. As such, my father frowned upon the Babajun's old-fashioned lifestyle and beliefs, but he wasn't blind to how much I loved the old man, and so occasionally he consented to let me board the Fadausi, uh, Fadausi and go along for, for the ride. I will always cherish my, the, my memories of those voyages, the warmth behind Babajun's smile, the excitement of leaving, leaving Regulus behind, chatting with the pilgrims, and getting lost in the stars, and eating pre-packaged uh, fesenjan, fesenjan out of a shiny tin. I probably butchered that, anyway. Those times are all crystal clear in my memory, as if they happened yesterday. Oh, how I miss that wonderful man. That may seem silly coming from a mercenary engineer. But I have come to think of the life I have chosen as a way of honouring my Baba June. By carving my own path among the stars, I am doing what I can to keep his memory alive. That sounds trite, I am sure, but sue me. It's what I have chosen to believe. And what about after you left time? Where would you study? I actually spent a little time in the Lillian Commonwealth before I p pursued my studies. Long story, that, but suffice to say, it was its own kind of learning ex experience. When I did decide to get a higher education, I wound back up in the Free Worlds League. I did my undergrad stu studies at the University of Atreus, and went on to Cyan University in the Capella Confederation to earn my doctorates. For a top three school in the Maskarov, Maskarovka screened admission process, Sayanyu was surprisingly open to transfer students. <clears throat> anyway, I could go on and on for hours about my academic career, and you'll probably smile and nod as I rambled, but come on, 
I mean, this can't be interesting to you, can it? You are a mercenary. You stomp around in a giant robot, robot for a, li a living. Uh, it's called a mech. Anyway, yeah, go on. The closest I got to adventure back then was my uh, dissertation de defense. Yeah, alright, okay. Well, it was nice chatting with you. Okay, Commander. Yeah, anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave you to it. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we'll talk later. Of course, Commander. I'm always happy to talk shop. Is there anything else you wanted to know? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, it's all good. You have a bloody good day, alright? <clears throat> See you later. Alright, so just give me one moment. I didn't, just need to clear my throat. Doing all these voices, it, uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> kills the throat. But anyway, uh, what are we? I got some mail. Uh, anyway. So, let's go and talk to Samiri. That'll be the final one we talk to. Uh, getting to know uh, all the crew. Hey, Commander. Something I could do for you? Yeah, I'm collecting stories about the crew. And I want to know uh, a bit more about you. Well, I'm from a noble family like you. We're old money. Uh, made our fortune out in Razahag then uh, repatriated to the Victorian Concordat. That's where I grew up. I'm not sure this is the kind of stuff you were hoping to hear, but we can talk about whatever. I'm not shy. Oh, Alright, well where in the Concordat are you from? I grew up in New Vandenberg. It's a nice, nice enough place, I suppose. Do you like birds? Uh, yeah, what do, what do you ask? Because New Vandenberg is crawling with them, especially in one, especially one, it's basically one big aviary. Something like two thirds of the native fauna has feathers, flutters on the wind, and splatters its excrement across every available surface. Naturally, the original colonists adopt the feathery little monsters into their culture, and those of us that uh, came after were kind of stuck with it. Statues, fountains, murals, you name it. Just a giant feathery pile of screeching alien birds. If the system had a motto, it'd be Squawk. Oh, I don't know, it sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like my cup right up my alley, my cup of tea, you know? Try living there. I give you about six months of having your lunch stolen by gulls and your head shut on by finches before you get uh, before you change your tune. Oh, alright, it was like that, is it? Uh, Anyway, where'd you learn to pilot a leopard? The Torian uh, Naval Institute on New Vandenberg. Well, among other places, it's a big campus. The low gravity training station orbiting uh, Lompoc was my second home for a time. TNI training isn't usually open to civilians, but my parents had good credit back then, and they could name drop. Uh, they could name drop Protector Calderon. 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 Anyway. That'll get you pretty far in the Concordat, for a while anyway. The other cadets in my class weren't espe especially happy with sharing air with a civvy, but they couldn't say much, and I was nobility and they weren't. Everyone sort of kept me at arm's length, so I had plenty of time to concentrate on my studies. I got my certification in both dropship and jumpship operation in four years. I even tried working on commercial jump crew for a while, once upon a time. The people were fun, but it wasn't for me. The ratio of flying uh, to violent jump sickness skewed hard in the wrong direction. Mm, okay, well, uh, tell me a bit about your family. What, uh, what about House Meyer? You're looking at it. My parents are both gone. Blood cancer and heart disease, respectively. Both treatable. But they weren't out of money at that point, so into the ground they went. Ditto my brother David, who ran off to serve in the Third Succession War and never came back. Yeah, I'm no loss to strange, uh, stranger to loss myself. Yes, I'm sure you're not. Nobody is, really. It's a rough galaxy. David was 13 years older than me and had a foot out the door before I turned three. And my parents, well... 
They raised me by proxy, in the traditional noble fashion. There was no real bond there, even when I was young. None of this is to say that my folks were bad people. They just... they weren't. They just... they were just doing what they knew. Their upbringings had been outsourced, just like mine was. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about my family. They're gone. I'm here. The end. So, have you got another question, or should uh, we get back to our duties? Yeah, so your family came from Razzlehug, huh? Yeah, it was a long time ago, but yeah, my pa as my parents told it, we were landowners on Pomme de Terre. It's an agricultural world, sort of a breadbasket of the Dr Draconis Combine. And yes, I know that uh, Pomme de Terre means p potato. My ancestors uh, came from the planet Potato. It took some time for me to accept that, but hey, here we are. Anyway, moving on. How's Maya's holdings were meager? But the value of that land was astronomical. For minor no nobility, they were very wealthy. And then th the third succession war kicked, uh, broke out, and the political rhetoric got ugly. Uh, House Meyer didn't want a single part of what was happening, so my ancestors emptied their accounts and ran. As a rule, House Curita takes a really dim view of nobles who cut and run. Words like traitor and defector start getting thrown around. In the Combine, you really don't want to be on the receiving end of allegations like that. I wouldn't be standing here today if House Calderon hadn't uh, granted my ancestors asylum in the Concorda. In all likelihood, House Maya would have been wiped out before I was even born. It's a rough break. Anyway, uh, it was good uh, chatting with you, getting to know you a bit more, and uh, Maybe I'll take you out for a beer sometime, eh, love? <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, okay, be my guest. What do you need? Oh, just that beer later. But uh, otherwise, I'll talk to you later, alright? Anyway, so that's a bit of RP. We've got to know the crew. And now, uh, we're going to kick off the... Uh, the heavy metal DLC. Now, I believe when you first start a campaign, you have to forward uh, everything by a day. And there we go. New mechs and weapons available. Hey, Commander. The talk on the Merc now is that some hot new mechs and weapon systems fell off a cargo ship and are available to folks with the right connections. Well, I got a connection. So give the word, and a free creative uh, random new goodies will magically appear in our cargo hold. Okay. <laughs> or we could travel the straight and narrow, uh, buying them in stores and salvaging them from the battlefield like normal. What do you say? Oh, jeez, crikey, mate, we'd be mad not to take the bloody crate. What do you think? There we go. What do we get? Oh, nice. We got a uh, a Vulcan battle mech, which is not bad. And we got, uh, what's this coil? Okay. Contained overflow inertia linkage coil system of beam weaponry. Translates power from motion into a kinetic battery for rapid release. In practical terms, this means that the further a unit moves in a, a turn, uh, tractors evasive charges. The more damage it can dish out with its coil attack, and the more heat it generates. Coil weapons will explode if destroyed, <laughs> uh, devastating the installed location. The coil M requires the, the midline attack output of these weapon types. But, uh, okay. Eh, it's not bad, I'll take it. That mech is ready to fight, Commander. Me too, Vulcan is a, is a curious mech that's designed primarily for support attacks but also mounts an EC-2, one of the longest range weapons available. Mech warriors normally ditch it in favor of uh, more armor or different weaponry that contemplates the Vulcan's close quarter strengths. Okay. Oh, uh, well, let's check it out. We've got a new toy straight up. And let's see, it's already uh, fitted. So it has 400 armor. What are these guys? Got 680. Okay, so the armor's a bit lacking. 
It's got quite a few jump jets. So we could make this a uh, close quarters type machine. Uh, but for now, we can leave that as is. So we're going to move it up here. So let's say that's not bad. Look, uh, it's a bit weak. Not going to lie. So we're going to try and do a little bit of refitting. Uh, that doesn't take up too much time because we are in career mode. And so I'm going to... I'm going to remove jump jet. I find three jump jets are fine. Uh, don't have a lot of ammo. But I don't want to spend too much time uh, kitting this out. So we're going to use that extra uh, half a ton we just got. I'm going to leave the legs. Um, no, actually, let's do this. And we'll shore up our front armor a little. There we go. It's not much, but I can do more later. So we'll confirm that. That takes no time at all. Yeah, bloody hell, thanks, mate. That was quick. Alright, so we're going to do the same here. We're going to drop a jump jet. And we're going to put uh, some armor on. Now, the AC2s I'm probably going to end up getting rid of. And replacing these uh, with a couple of um, large lasers when we get them. The coil... Uh, it's three tons. I'll put that on later, because yeah, it otherwise takes too much time. Don't like the ammo there, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reduce the back armor a little, and then put a bit on the front. Legs are a little weak, so I'm going to up that just a tad. Put 10 on there. 10 on there. 10 on there, and there we go. So that'll do for now. Right. Because we've got jump jets. Done, oh, geez, Yang, you're a bloody workhorse, mate. You're a friggin' legend. Alright, so, uh, we're gonna do the same with the Vulcan. We're gonna take off. Oh, wow, look at all these jump jets. Uh, what does this do? Plus, it's a CQC suite. The Close Quarters Combat Suite provides the Vulcan with a range bonus to its support weaponry for increased engagement distance. That's awesome! This equipment also provides a substantial defense against reprisal melee attacks. That's... Oh, look at that! Plus 10 melee hit defense. Holy hell! Um, however, we don't need to... Uh, six jump jets, so that just generates way too much heat. So I'm gonna leave that as is on the back, and I'm gonna put a lot more armor on the front if we can, because it's really weak right now. Look at this. How much does this weigh? Nothing. Oh, I might even. Oh, the eight, uh, the AC twos are really quite heavy so we need to just up it a little bit uh, that's gonna have to do for now so I'm gonna confirm that so what's his armor like now 480 it's not great but it's along the lines of the urban mech. Now the urban mech I don't have to change much at all. Uh, let's see. Two jump jets. There's not really much I can do with that. I mean I can... reduce that a little bit. Put that up. That'll do. That'll do just fine. Jesus, it's a weird place to put a heat sink. Alright, so that didn't take any time at all. 
But I do want to change this Vulcan up. That, it looks like a really interesting mech. So, yeah. Um, so I'll probably spend uh, one episode doing some uh, basic contracts. And the rest I'm going to focus on flashpoints. So what I'm going to do, all, I'm going to do all the grindy stuff um, in between episodes. Oh, and before I go, I'm actually going to change this up too. So our company is a little different. But yeah, I'm going to do all the grindy missions uh, between episodes. Might do the occasional one if there's a, you know some time left over. Um, because I'm going to make each episode an hour long. And uh, it's going to be mainly focused on flashpoints and hopefully the mini campaign since it's a very roleplay based uh, series. And that's that's my my hope anyway. So we're going to change the uh, company and we're going to change it to because uh, it's the Irwin family. So we're going to change it to Irwin's Taipans. The deadliest snake in the world. So, is there a snake? So, I'll try and find a snake type insignia. So, hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll go through and make this a you know a character based or character driven. Um, yeah, character-driven um, playthrough. Are there seriously no snakes? Well, there's a Chinese dragon. It's about the closest thing. Paradox? Yeah, no thanks. Uh, so, let's... I don't know. I wanted a snake. There's no bloody snakes. Friggin' horse. We've got a bloody octopus. Jeez, um really no snakes. And there's a spider, but yeah, anyway. Can you believe it? You thought that would have been a definite thing. Oh well. Um, I guess I'll we'll have to go for something else. How about we just call them Irwin Taipans? Because it's, it's a family based company. Oh, what's this? Eh, it's a boar's head. I don't want that. I think it's something with fangs, but... No. Seriously. Why would they not have... Oh my god, no. No. Looks like a cock too, though. <laughs> You call it Ir Irwin's cockatoos, but no, I think let's go for the. Uh... That's about as close as we're gonna get. It's snake-like. It looks uh, kind of cool, I guess. I could go with the stand, with the same symbol I did in the last playthrough, but don't really want to. That's not bad. It's kind of fitting. Jeez, HBS, you, out of all the uh, logos you, you made, you just didn't think to make a snake one. Ugh. Could do this death thing? No. You got a lion, you've got everything but a snake. You know what, we'll do that. <clears throat> and, um. No, we'll do it all black. 
Yeah, all black. Or maybe a bit of red. No. Hang on, let's do it all black first. There's all black, all black, all black, all black. Come on. I think I went straight past it. There we go. So, I'm going to do the accent bright red if I can. Eh. No. Uh, what about that? It's actually not bad. Kind of suits this, so yeah. Alright. So with the Owen type hands. Yeah, looks good to me. Alright. Well, so we're all set up. That's the uh, setup process. Um, now, it's uh, taken nearly the full hour uh, for the first episode. However, we've established our company, our company name, our background. So we were once uh, zoo owners and uh, wildlife documentarians, a family of them. We had a long tradition, of course, as, you know, uh, the direct descendants of the Irwins, or Steve Irwin. And uh, unfortunately, in this universe, uh, you know, nature documentaries aren't really uh, much of a thing because everyone's obsessed with battle mechs nowadays. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately the company went broke and uh, you know it is what it is so first episode we're gonna do a couple of um, we'll do just a couple of generic uh, missions and after that uh, I'll just do the grindy stuff off off no, I was gonna say stream because I've been doing uh, so many live streams with space engineers uh, I'll do off camera so you're not sitting just through the same style of missions over and over and over again because um, the idea is obviously to make a lot of money in the uh, the campaign playthrough so we'll do that and um, yeah but uh, in the first uh, the, sorry the second episode I'll just do a couple of missions uh, to show showcase uh, one of the, the new um, Vulcan mechs see how good it is and after that uh, we'll stick to as many flashpoints as we can. So I hope you can join me for episode two. I hope you enjoyed the little bit of storytelling there. I hope to continue with that and all the role play uh, in future episodes. And uh, we hope to see you next time. This is Huey signing off for now. And until the next time we see each other, well, the next time you hear my voice, take it easy and bye for now.